Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to this uh, webinar on auditing a digital insurance world. It's a big pleasure on behalf of ECIA to welcome you in this very sunny afternoon here in Brussels, as you might see in my background, to discuss a very hot topic, not just for the business, but even for our private life, because it's about uh, artificial intelligence and also the way internal audit can help the organization and can audit the different programs that are in place. The topic is currently in discussion in the European Parliament, few meters from here. So that's another reason why it's a hot topic, because as you might know, Europe is developing a new regulation that should be defined at the latest at the end of this year, and is called the Artificial Intelligence Act. So uh, for today, we will have some logistic details that I would like to share with you. We will use a Slido and you can connect to Slido on your mobile or on your PC or any other tool using the QR code that you see over here. We will use Slido for polls, we will use Slido for Q&A, and of course you will ask me, and what about the CPE? For the CPE, we will send you an email after the webinar, asking your details so that we can ask the different national institutes to issue the document and send it by email to you. We have, together with the insurance committee, developed in the context of this webinar, a very interesting new position paper about artificial intelligence. We will present, of course, the, the main highlights during the webinar today, but for details, uh, this paper will be available on the website just after the webinar, and we will also send you the link uh, to all participants together with together with the recording uh, of today's webinar. So I just have a very important and last thing to do, which is to introduce you our next speaker. So we have the privilege to welcome today amongst us Astrid Langeveld, who is the Chief Audit Executive at ACMEA. She is also a member of the ECIA Insurance Committee and she's based in the Netherlands. So Astrid, goeiemiddag and welcome. Thank you. With this first, we have also together with us, uh, Chiara Ziliani, who is head of group audit analytics at Generali, so based in Italy. Uh, ciao Chiara and welcome. Hi, hello everyone. Good afternoon. We have uh, Robert Zergani, who is uh, audit head group technology and operation Group Audit at Zurich Insurance, based in Zurich, so based in Switzerland. I think I must say Guten, Guten Tag, something like that to you, Robert, so welcome. And last but not the least, uh, we have Frank Heldens, who is Senior IT Auditor at ACMEA. So Frank, goeiemiddag and welcome. And I would also like to take the opportunity not, not just to welcome you for the webinars today, but also to welcome you as members of the working group that have prepared, written, reviewed, adjusted this really great paper. And you were with some colleagues, so I take the opportunity to welcome the colleagues from ACNEA, Generali and Zurich Insurance for the hard, hard job, big job and for the great paper. So thank you to all of you for your support. And now, Astrid, I will let you as the facilitator, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Pascal, uh, uh, for this nice introduction. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, we, we started last year already uh, with this paper as part of uh, our uh, overarching theme uh, we have, uh, have, uh, have, uh, have developed within the insurance committee that the, the theme is, let's say, auditing a digital insurance world. Uh, and we picked up the, the topic on uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, and we started the topic in May with our uh, in September last year, actually, with our first brainstorm. 
but we could not have anticipated that there would be such a, a big development over the last, uh, let's say, half year. Uh, we recently uh, finished this uh, this topic, but it's uh, it's all over the news, uh, let's say. So uh, it was a good choice. Uh, uh, and why uh, auditing uh, artificial intelligence? Well, uh, that's not uh, 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 that's an easy question, I think, uh, uh, to uh, to answer because it's uh, it's it's uh, it's a very hot topic, let's say. Um, and, and especially within the insurance company, because um, uh, we think that uh, in the current market context, the, the insurance company will, uh, the way they will operate will fundamentally change because of uh, uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, uh, the use of data and a algorithm is growing uh, really fast and um, yeah, it, it is actually expected to be a real key success picture. Uh, uh, key success factor also for companies uh, yeah, to be uh, to be ahead of the market. Uh, uh, artificial intelligence is of course already around us for for uh, many years, but uh, because of let's say the, the more powerful hardware and and actually the big data uh, uh, which is available currently, uh, it it uh, it makes a big step. Uh, and and especially in the insurance business where we have huge quantities of data uh, all over our insurance value chain, uh, this provides uh, tremendous opportunities. Uh, for example, for, for further automating our processes, uh, but also for the development of new and, and more customer centric pro products, uh, but also in our assessment of uh, insurance risks. So uh, uh, there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, our survey uh, showed that uh, that the application uh, uh, currently is now centered around uh, more the customer facing processes and pricing and compliance and uh, not as much yet uh, in, in the real core processes such as claims handling and policy administration. But uh, we expect that as always with new technologies that will uh, will speed up. Uh, Currently, there's a little bit of uh, hesitance because probably uh, we think that uh, uh, companies uh, think it's 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 uh, well might be dangerous to uh, to have no human intervention. So that's probably the case uh, why uh, it's not in our core processes. Uh, well, that's a little bit my uh, introduction. Um, of course, all these new developments uh, uh, influence the, the risk profile uh, of uh, insurance companies, uh, and that is where we have been uh, very busy on uh, writing uh, our paper on where the uh, internal audit function should add value in this uh, in this topic. Uh, um, and I would like to start with with our panelists uh, uh, with with a question. Actually, uh, what was the key challenge in your organization uh, related to the implementation of uh, art artificial intelligence. Uh, and maybe Chiara, as we said, uh, ladies first, uh, maybe you can start. <laughs> With pleasure. So um, the key challenge, uh, also based on, uh, on all my company experience, I think uh, a big challenge is the definition of, a, of an internal regulation that frames and provides discipline to AI application development. Companies must define appropriate uh, internal policies, internal operational guidelines to, um, to harmonize the, the organizational models and implementation of AI applications. The, what we saw is that often AI model selection is addressed uh, uh, without a standard approach, but mostly based, uh, I would say, on a case-by-case -case analysis. The point is that uh, without uh, an adequate internal regulatory framework, all the requirements about uh, interpretability, transparency, fairness, and so on might become uh, weaker. And in the end, the, the, the ultimate risk uh, is that uh, the, the development of AI application is in the end maybe of inadequate quality and afterward uh, it increases the complexity in the maintenance of those applications. That I would say is, the, is, is one of the biggest challenge. Yeah, it, it introduces more complexity, yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, Robert, maybe you can say something about uh, the experience in your organization within Zurich. 
Yeah, our organization started already a few years ago um, with an AI working group, um, defining policies, defining governance. Um, and what we always saw is regulation is often lagging um, new developments. So on one side, that, that was one of the challenge um, in, in a very changing regulatory environment to um, develop governance and de develop sound processes. And then uh, on the other side, we see huge changes also in the industry and, and the te technology uh, applied. So this year it's it's the large language models. Um, we don't know what we do will be next year. So there's so much uh, technology um, ad advances um, um, and uh, um, putting something in place which which is enough. Um, specific but still agnostic of of technology um, um, and to be adaptable. I think that was one of the challenge to um, govern AI. Um, but um, I think also with our paper we will help um, giving smaller but also larger companies to give some insights how they can do that. Yeah, thank you, Robert. Uh, and Frank, uh, can you say something about the key challenges? Uh, yeah, I think to add uh, to the uh, uh, importance of governance uh, policies and uh, uh, strategies, etc., around AI, I think it's also good to um, stress the importance of a consistent uh, and um, uh, of a consistent development process uh, throughout the entire organization across teams to make sure that there's no key uh, person risk in there to fully rely on data scientists that uh, uh, built the AI algorithm. Um, and uh, I think that's important to make sure that that's been done uh, uh, consistently throughout the entire organization to make sure that the entire organization uh, remains within their uh, um, ris uh, risk appetite. Um, and also to make sure that business is really involved in all the key elements within that development cycle to make sure that uh, a sound discussion is, uh, is, is, is done on, uh, uh, for example, the decision of a model, which algorithm should we use, which, uh, how should we train the algorithm that really also helps to explain uh, the outcomes of the algorithm to make it a bit more explainable to uh, increase the transparency throughout the organization. I think that's also worthwhile mentioning. Okay, yeah, very clear, uh, Frank. Um, of course, uh, we as a, as a working group are, are very proud of our uh, our paper and and think it will add at uh, value, as Robert was saying, to uh, to also uh, well the bigger but also the smaller companies because uh, it's as important for smaller companies because uh, reputational risk is the same in a small or a big company. Uh, um, we have. Uh, uh, set up the paper in, in various uh, parts uh, and we would like now to explain a little bit about those parts. Uh, um, um, so maybe Robert, it would be nice first because that's uh, uh, always a, a tricky one eh? when we're talking about AI. What is actually AI? What is the definition? What are we talking about? Uh, so to set a little bit that, that base, maybe you can uh, elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, there's there's a lot of definition on, on AI out, um, and uh, um, you can take different approaches to to define AI. But when it comes to insurance um, regulation and in, in insurance industry, probably you need to follow more or less the definition of the regulators. And uh, for for our paper, we we use the generally accepted uh, definition uh, of the OECD. Which is which is very wide, but it's intentionally wide um, to ensure that no medium or high risk implementation of AI, AI are falling through the cracks. And uh, um, when, when you read it out, uh, it, it, it sounds very simple. It says machine-based system that is cap capable of influencing the environment by producing an output. So that's the simplest term um, you you can get and. There's, there's only later in the definition, there's some um, uh, links to machine learning and advanced technology, but already a very simple decision-based system and can be biased and can be biased by very sim simple algorithms. 
um, by by a decision tree, for example. So, um, in the sense of the regulator, and also how we try to reflect with our paper, um, we kept the decision, uh, the definition um, broad, aligned to the regulators, um, to ensure that um, all the relevant um, medium or high risk systems are in in that uh, definition definition category. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and it's still going on eh, in regulation, so it won't be, uh, well, it won't be stable probably, but this is, I think, a good uh, starting point. Uh, um, maybe, Frank, uh, Pascal was already mentioning uh, we have the AI, AI Act uh, in the European Parliament now uh, in progress uh, and so already on, uh, on first, in, in, in the first stage of development. Can you say something about the AI Act in in a uh, in few uh, few words in a nutshell? Is that possible? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Um, since we're talking about a AI, I thought why not ask a very familiar uh, uh, generative AI solution to help me on that. So I okay. asked that uh, chatbot uh, uh, to give me a two sentence description on what is the AI Act, and it came back, and I quote. It is a legis uh, legislative proposal aimed at regulating AI systems within the uh, EU. It seeks to establish a balance between innovation and safe and trustworthy AI systems. Now okay. you can argue about, about the accuracy of that uh, 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 definition, uh, but it does touch upon uh, that balance that is being sought between innovation and safe and trustworthy AI systems. And I think that's really reflected in the uh, AI Act uh, with the uh, four risk categories that are defined there. Uh, it basically uh, categorizes AI systems in four uh, um, uh, buckets, four categories, with the first being the uh, unacceptable risk, uh, risk uh, application of AI. And um, yeah, basically that is uh, an AI system that is a clear threat to uh, safety, livelihoods and rights of people. Uh, it's forbidden and cannot be put into the EU market. Simple as that. An example of uh, such an uh, unacceptable risk uh, 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 system is um, uh, social scoring by governance. It's not, al uh, not allowed to use human behavior to uh, give uh, ben benefits or even uh, have negative consequences or on whatever. Uh, second category is the high risk uh, 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 AI application. And that's basically the, uh, uh, the category of AI system that has the most strict requirements, uh, 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 but is still allowed. Um, examples of high risk AI uh, uh, systems are um, um, systems that can be used in a recruitment process uh, in uh, selecting uh, 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 possible candidates for a job position. That's not that's that is allowed, but under strict uh, requirements. Um, uh, those requirements come in quite a different, uh, a, a, quite a huge set of specific uh, uh, elements that need to be met. For example, around uh, uh, governance and risk management systems. For example, around transparency uh, uh, to users and human oversight. Uh, but also around technical documentation and uh, 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 how to measure the system's accuracy, robustness, uh, uh, cybersecurity. So it's a very exten extensive list of requ requirements that needs to be met, uh, met before the system can be put into the market. Um, and then finally, there is the limited risk and uh, uh, minimal risk uh, uh, category. Um, that is basically the rest of the AI systems. Um, some additional requirements may be needed, for example, uh, uh, chatbots. Um, uh, uh, for chatbots, it must be made clear that people are speaking with a chatbot, but um, yeah, it's definitely not as extensive as the high risk AI category. Um, well, that basically means that a, 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 a lot of work is to be done. Yeah. We have to be make sure that we comply with all those additional requirements, and we, that is, companies uh, and uh, uh, um, governance that uh, 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 want to uh, use AI systems in the European market. Um, it requires a, a sort of a CE marking, 
before you can put that system into place, including a, a check, a, a self-assessment or uh, something like that to make sure that you comply with all the, the uh, requirements. And uh, uh, non-compliance comes with um, quite excessive uh, uh, fines, can come with excessive fines, like 6% uh, of uh, uh, global annual uh, turnover. So that can be quite a lot of money. Significant, uh, yeah. Yeah, ab absolutely. So work is to be done. Uh, 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 the question remains, of course, when should that work be done? When should we be prepared for that a new AI Act that is coming? Uh, that unfortunately is a question that I cannot answer with a, a concrete date, uh, but the uh, uh, European Committee is aiming for early uh, 2024, as Pascal mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, but that all needs to be put into the perspective of the European political arena. Um, I think this week is an, uh, an important uh, 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 time. Uh, there is this uh, uh, um, uh, draft negation mandate that needs to be uh, uh, formally accepted by all by all um, uh, by the whole Parliament. And after that, uh, uh, the, the real negoti uh, negotiation for the uh, final act can uh, start. And um, yeah, I think last week there was this news item that you, uh, 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 still new amendments were being tabled. Um, so that makes that decision, that vote this week, really important and a really a key decision moment in um, the next step of the AI Act. And uh, also, of course, then. Um, are we? Uh, when can we expect the act to be finalized? Uh, one thing is for sure: whether it is is uh, early uh, 2024, whether it's uh, earlier, whether it's later, the impact can be uh, um, yeah, can be huge. Okay, thank you, Frank. So uh, it's very important, also, as I understand, to have the right risk classification then for your. Uh, AI applications that will yeah, be uh, a challenge. It really starts with uh, uh, knowing all the AI systems that you have, that you put on the market and uh, risk assessing them. Uh, that's the first key step. OK, thank you. Chiara, uh, yes, uh, you've uh, made a tremendous effort in uh, writing down uh, uh, issues around all the impacts of uh, AI, uh, for example, on strategy and governance and legal and compliance. Uh, can you say something about that? Uh, yes, so but mentioning all the impacts that uh, AI will have is, is, a, is, a, is a material task. So let, let me share a, a couple of, uh, of examples. A, a big impact, first of all, is obviously on the operations management. Uh, because op operations are dramatically changing thanks to the technological innovation connected to the artificial intelligence. What we saw, as you were mentioning, Astrid, is that in the insurance sector at the moment, uh, the areas most backed by AI are the um, processes customer facing, for example, the, the customer service, where the aim is to improve customer satisfaction and at the same time reducing cost. There is a less implementation in the administrative areas, uh, for example, uh, financial reporting or policy administration. In, in these areas, what we saw is that companies are probably still a bit reluctant uh, to rely on AI and consider that the human intervention is still significantly needed. Probably it's it's just a matter of time and in, in the future we will see that also these processes will uh, um, migrate uh, to the towards AI system. The point is that with these new technologies, new risks also come up. And I'm referring to risks related to, to compliance, to security, uh, data protection, ethics. The, what risk man, where, where risk management should start from is to make sure that the AI strategy is aligned to the business company, uh, to, to the business strategy of the company and to the company risk of capital. Specific policies and guidelines must provide guidance on the company's definition of AI, on the, of the, on the kind of AI applications that are allowed and the ones that are not allowed. 
provide guidance also on the extent of decision making that is allowed for AI systems. So uh, such a framework should provide transparency within the company about AI should be used and how it should not be used because clear guidance helps the organization to find opportunities to get the benefits of AI, but at the same time remaining within the company strategy and the company risk appetite. So first big impact, I would say definitely on the operations management. But another significant impact is the, is the social one. Uh, which is still difficult to predict and quantify, but for sure will be huge considering the speed of development of artificial intelligence. It's still not so clear what this impact will be precisely. For sure, AI will have a positive impact in areas such as healthcare, transports, communication. Uh, nevertheless, there are some uh, potential risks connected to, uh, to, to the fact, for example, that uh, AI could uh, perpetuate and amplify existing prejudice and social inequalities, especially when using historical training data. Think, for example, of risks such as uh, uh, bias, uh, privacy violations, uh, unethical use, uh, use of fakes. All these risks uh, are uh, at the origin of the increase in attention by the re regulatory bodies, because the question is how can AI be regulated to prevent uh, it causes harm to people, but why still unlocking the, the potential? Because there is a huge potential in the use of artificial intelligence, which, which should be unlocked. At the moment, AI is not unregulated. Uh, there are already data protection and privacy laws, uh, which already set some, uh, some boundaries. However, as uh, Frank just explained, there are uh, new, more prescriptive AI laws that are, uh, um, that are under uh, definition. And beside this uh, uh, comprehensive regulation being developed, there are already uh, many principles developed. For example, um, EU has recently adopted a recommendation on the ethics of artificial intelligence, which provides a set of principles and guidelines for developing and using AI in a responsible and trustworthy manner. So countries, regulators and industry bodies all around the world are now rapidly moving uh, forward with the legislation in uh, in this field and the common denominator is always that they should address concern about transparency of machine decision making and uh, and ethics okay very clear uh, chiara thank you very much uh, i think we have a poll now uh, pascal uh, uh, and that is uh, a poll on uh, yeah, and the current role you have as uh, attendees of this webinar uh, related to the assessment of uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, maybe you can uh, provide an answer. Is that only advisory or insights? OK, none. <laughs> or do you already include it in your risk assessment? Or maybe some of you already provide full assurance? Uh, Yeah, I think we have a kind of result not really changing a lot anymore. It's none stays around 70. That is uh, uh, quite a large number, actually. So, uh, but that's why it's very good that you attend this, uh, this webinar. Uh, but also I see some uh, of you already have uh, full assurance audits on it. So that is, uh, is good to see. Uh, but the conclusion is a little bit uh, that we have uh, some steps to take as uh, as internal audit function within the insurance industry. And that is also a little bit in line with uh, the results of our survey. Uh, isn't it uh, uh, 
uh, Robert, uh, because, uh, well, that's something we saw also in the survey. Uh, and maybe you can say something how it is done within your organization. Yeah, in, in our survey, what we saw is that the larger um, insurance companies already yeah. had uh, an approach. And the smaller and mid-size, they, they often still has, have no policy, but also no audit activity over um, AI plans or have not performed anything the last uh, 24 months. Um, in our organization, everything what we're doing is aligned to our man man mandate. So also in artificial intelligence, um, we are providing assurance similar than over an underwriting process or over a claims management process. Um, we, for example, select a few AI instances um, which which are either live or already in, or in development. Um, we look at the governance over AI, the risk assessment of second line, and the controls implemented. Um, we, for example, developed our own methodology, which we call alg algorithm um, review and testing. Um, and you see also in the uh, appendix of our paper a uh, very, very well outlined methodology you can apply yourself. So in a nutshell, we, we really um, provide the assurance agreed with our boards and audit committees as, as part of our um, audit mandate, um, similarly then to any, any other um, risk area we need to cover. Okay, and how is that within Generali, uh, uh, Chiara? So uh, also, in, also in our case, uh, I mean, the, the, the role, uh, the, the mission of internal audit is stated in the, in the audit policy and uh, um, what we do compare in, in the area of artificial intelligence does not differ that much compared to what we do in, in other areas. So the mission of internal audit is to enhance and protect the value of the organization by providing risk based and objective assurance advice and insight and decide. This applies to artificial intelligence as to any other areas where we provide assurance. Uh, the internal audit function plans and carries out the activities following our specific group audit, group audit methodology. In addition, we might carry out uh, uh, advisory activities for the board, the senior management and uh, other stakeholders uh, with nature and scope agreed uh, to them. Uh, for what relates to AI, I said, not really different. Uh, in the case of AI, uh, internal audit in general has played both roles. Uh, on one side, uh, we have uh, played a pure assurance role. We have been auditing AI governance and risk management with an audit program um, encompassing um, the seven key risk areas, strategy and governance, legal and compliance, system development, operations management, security and data protection, the human capital, which is a very important factor, and sustainability. On the other end, we have also played as advisor um, upon the request of the of the first line. When the first line in general in generally developed their own uh, smart automation and artificial intelligence risk framework, they ask for advice to all the uh, control functions and independent advice uh, in order to build it more uh, more properly. Of course, we, we maintain, uh, we would provide this advice whilst maintaining our independence. Okay, yeah. Thank you. And Frank, uh, can you say something out, uh, about uh, our company? Yeah, I think that, that, that uh, uh, we follow a similar approach as uh, uh, Chiara does. Uh, um, of course, uh, uh, we try to give assurance where possible, but in this case for uh, uh, artificial intelligence, we uh, started, uh, we followed the maturity of the organization. That means that we started with, a, uh, uh, with insights and advisory services on the uh, standards, the, the framework that was uh, established around AI. Uh, and we're now getting into the uh, 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 into our formal assurance role by selecting yeah. uh, one, two uh, AI systems and uh, uh, really audit uh, uh, if they comply with uh, our internal and external uh, requirements. Okay, thank you. Yeah.
that's uh, clear. So we are speeding up uh, and and following the speed of the organization yeah. uh, as for the other topics. Uh, okay, um, we have another poll. I uh, would like to uh, have your input. Uh, uh, and that is uh, related to the aspects you are currently uh, including in your audit activities uh, and you're assessing. So we, uh, we pointed out a few aspects. So the strategy, the governance, uh, also the actually the things that also Chiara, Frank and Robert were already mentioning. Uh, Yeah, I think the outcome is uh, clear, uh, I think, and which is very good. I think that uh, as uh, I think also the panelists are mentioning, it's very important to start with the right governance and to really have it aligned with your strategy. So uh, uh, these uh, two topics uh, are, uh, well, say, uh, <laughs> at least uh, having high percentages. So that's very good. Um, and uh, yeah, well, these are also important topic we included uh, in uh, in uh, in the audit program we uh, we mentioned, uh, and maybe we can uh, discuss a little bit on that on on how actually do you audit those various uh, components? Uh, uh, maybe you, uh, Kiara, can start uh, with a few of them. Uh. Yes, strategy and governance, which is very much voted. Yeah, so, so that is, uh, it's fine. It's it's nice that it's on top of the list, so you can start. <laughs> yes, yes, sure. So here the risk is that uh, um, maybe weaknesses in the strategy definition or poor governance of AI initiatives might lead to failure in the implementation or underperformance compared to competitors in the market. And this might be originated by several causes. First of all, uh, lack of a clear vision about the risks and the opportunities of AI for the company. Uh, second, poor setup or poor organizational commitments in the company for AI projects. Third point, uh, third possible, let's say, root causes is the um, maybe a lack of appropriate performance metrics to monitor uh, the AI applications. But most of all, as uh, already mentioned many times, uh, uh, lack of defined and uh, approved policies, procedures, operating models, clarification, I would say, of roles and uh, responsibilities. So what auditors should check is exactly this. Has an AI strategy been defined and documented and cascaded within the organization? How are the AI initiatives communicated within the organization? Is there a monitoring uh, of the accomplishment of the objectives in place. And most of all, is there a governance framework, operating models being defined? That, that, that's really key questions that we should, uh, uh, that we should ask when uh, auditing these areas related to, to strategy and, uh, and governance. And um, Another key areas uh, I would uh, I, I would mention is the one related to uh, legal and compliance. Here the risk is that compliance breaches might lead to adverse publicity, uh, regulatory fines, and in the end, uh, also reputational risk. Again, this might be originated by several causes. First of all, obvious uh, missing analysis or acknowledgement of legal and supervisory requirements, including all the ones related to uh, data access and data treatment. But also, uh, especially considering the last developments, also missing awareness of the ethical aspects in the AI application. We, we made the example of the uh, EU has recently adopted this recommendation of the ethics of artificial intelligence, which, which provides really a set of uh, 
principles and guidelines for uh, um, for using AI in a responsible manner. And some of these key principles relate to human dignity, uh, human agency and autonomy, fairness, uh, democracy, privacy and data protections. So auditors on this respect uh, uh, sh should really question themselves have all the relevant regulation and international standards uh, uh, first of all, being identified and then embedded in the internal framework. Are uh, all the AI initiatives prepared for compliance with the existing and upcoming regulation about GDPR, for example, or the uh, upcoming EU uh, AI Act? But again, about data, specifically about data, is the necessity of using personal data being assessed before using those uh, those data. How personal data will be used to train AI system and which is the purpose for uh, for using them. Mm. About ethics, just to conclude, did the company carry out uh, a fundamental right impact assessment? Is it possible that the AI system could interfere uh, with the user decision making process in, in an unintended way? If we uh, if we use a, a chatbot, for example, or another conversational agent, is the human end user aware of that? Do they know that they are talking to a non-human agent? These are type of very specific consideration that should be taken into account when auditing these areas in artificial intelligence. Just to give some example. Yes, very clear. Yeah, it's really a matter of, uh, as I understand you correctly, to really understand your business, what is going on, and to be sure there's a, yeah, there's a, exactly. an overview and, uh, and, and, and you have a complete view of all the initiatives eh, as an auditor also, and, uh, and, and to assess whether the company has that overview, but also to have a good view and understanding of all the regulations and standards and, and, and risks, of course, uh, identified. Uh, uh, and that can be very impactful, especially those ethical and social uh, risks. Uh, so that's very clear. Uh, uh, maybe Frank, you can say something about, uh, let's say, the more technical part of uh, AI the, and the performance, uh, technical performance. Yeah, uh, of course, uh, of course. Um, and how do we audit that? Eh? That's, uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, uh, um, I think uh, Kiara already stressed the importance of good governance and also about the input data for the uh, development. And uh, uh, in my opinion, it all comes down to a solid AI development cycle. All checks and balances within the development cycle need to be there to make sure that uh, 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 the uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the model is trained accurately, that uh, uh, the uh, right model is being ch chosen, uh, that uh, the organization uh, really uh, challenged themselves in how to measure the performance of the, uh, 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 of the AI uh, system. Uh, you all want to see that embedded within the development cycle. Uh, because uh, in case of uh, uh, um, uh, um, Mistakes within the development cycles, you can immediately expect results of that AI system to be uh, yeah, at least less good. Uh, you want that cycle to be up, up to standard to make sure that the results are good. Um, yeah, the risk therewith of a, a bad de development cycle is, of course, that uh, um, the, uh, poor performance, uh, poor uh, uh, performance over time, perhaps also because uh, 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 predictions might be good at this moment, but you, you want to make sure that they're good over time as well. Um, results may be uh, 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 difficult to explain by the business. Uh, you want to make sure that you make all the decisions within the development cycle to make sure that you can explain the outcomes of the model afterwards. Um, yeah, and if you don't meet those requirements, of course, there can be consequences like reputation loss, financial loss, etc., etc. Um, I think the key elements are within that 
development cycle, also around security that is, because if the security of an AI system is not up to standard, training data may uh, may be compromised, may be uh, um, uh, inaccurate, uh, may be false and result to uh, false results in the end, or uh, uh, the, 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 the AI uh, algorithm may be stolen uh, in itself, uh, uh, making it a loss of uh, um, uh, intellectual property. Uh, so also security within the development cycle should be addressed appropriately. Now, uh, if we want to uh, uh, audit the development cycle, if we want to audit security within the development cycle, um, in essence, there, there can be, uh, you can apply two approaches. You can use the desktop approach, in which you basically follow the development cycle, use audit trail within the development cycle to test if all the controls are in place to make sure that uh, uh, the right model is chosen, to make sure that the right input data is chosen, to make sure that appropriate testing is being performed on the outcomes, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that really helps in giving back your uh, your feedback, your uh, 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 um, um, recommendations, your findings on the improvement on that development cycle. On the other hand, there's also a possibility to use a full review approach. Um, and that approach basically uh, 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 you as an auditor try to reproduce at least parts of the algorithm to make sure that the output of the algorithm is accurate. So you uh, 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 um, uh, reproduce parts of the uh, algorithm to check if the uh, uh, results that you get from your basic model, that is, if they uh, uh, match with results that are expected based on the um, real model's performance. Um, of course, both techniques uh, have uh, uh, um, uh, their benefits and their uh, their advantages and their disadvantages, uh, but they can really help in uh, uh, a good decision in which approach you, you choose can really help in uh, uh, making uh, the right impact on uh, for your organization. Okay, thank you, Frank. Uh, maybe Robert, you would like to add anything to already these topics uh, on on the the other program of AI. Do we miss anything? For example, like the human capital part. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> the human capital can be a root cause for elements which are not working. For example, lack of training, lack of understanding, lack of knowledge, um, la lack of. Um, workforce development um, within these these new areas um, yeah. so on one side we can interpret that as root causes of of our findings but on the other side we can also audit these elements as being also a, a control on a more the softer side um, um, to ensure that um, ai is implemented the way that the company wants and it's aligned to the strategy um, another topic um, is e ESG. We see uh, a lot of ESG controls um, also being developed in parallel to new a AI regulations. And as soon as AI is used for any of these elements in, in the ESG space, we have similar issues than with, with any AI, for example, decision in investment, um, impacting in, in green mash, washing, sanctions, um, for example, wrong procurement decisions. Um, so we have a lot of areas which which are also overlapping with ESG relevant controls. Um, and uh, you find that also in our section um, from an audit program perspective that we also consider these risks uh, in addition. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we now do have time uh, for uh, some questions. Um, I don't know whether our questions uh, ah, anonymous. Uh, ah, you already touched a little bit on that. Uh, I think, uh, Robert, uh, the, the impact of sustainability uh, on IA models. You say there's a lot of uh, things in common, but uh, it's also yeah. impacting sustainability on itself. Eh? It's using a lot of electricity also. That's an issue on, on itself. Yeah. Correct. So 
um, I mean, all all computer power using the cloud, um, using extensive calculation uh, engine, pro producing uh, carbon emission in its own. And, uh, and you see, for example, the, the discussion on crypto and crypto mining um, is already using uh, an average uh, size cons consumption of, of uh, Belgium. So um, we, we expect uh, AI in itself um, being um, a contributor to um, ESG. But on the other side, there's a lot of positive um, um, environmental um, elements which could be um, triggered by um, the use of AI, for example, better model, better predicting model on uh, natural disaster, hurricanes, yeah. flood. Arts prevention, then a lot of socio-economic uh, impacts, better medicine, uh, better training, imagery uh, with doctors, uh, medicament design. Um, so there's a lot of areas which AI will, will touch in the sustainability um, yeah. area. But we don't even know what, what the consequences will be. Yeah, we already mentioned at the start, it can help us to assess as insurance, that's very important to assess the risks, eh? especially the insured risks and uh, and maybe even then prevent it, uh, which might be helpful for, from a, a sustainability perspective. Uh, uh, we have one uh, top question I see, which is liked a lot, um, and that has a little bit to do, oh, it's uh, the second one now. What vivid, vivid examples do we have of using uh, AI, I think, in internal audit, and can it achieve extra no, extraordinary results that auditors cannot? Eh? So will it replace uh, our work? Uh, I think that is not something we focused upon in our paper. That might be an interesting topic for another one, but we focus really on the application in, in the business itself. But uh, is there anybody of you who would like to comment on that? Uh, do we already have real good examples of AI in auditing. Yeah, yeah I'm happy to uh, start and then my colleagues can jump in. Yeah. But um, I think uh, as, as an internal audit function, you should be using the same tools that the business are starting to use. So, and it also, it's a great training ground for your data scientist, if you have a data science team in, in your audit team, to start using machine learning, start using natural language processing, start using all these modern tools for audit cases and audit purposes. And uh, we, we made actually great progress in using them. Um, we have great outputs already as well uh, and finding um, elements we would not be able with any other technology. So, yeah. for example, we did a network analysis in, in procurement to find out the interrelationships between different vendors and different business units uh, based on transactional data. We, we would not be able to do that with millions of data sets. Um, so there's so many use cases you can uh, apply in, in the machine learning space to your audit questions. Um, yeah. And I really promote that, yeah. yeah. I fully, fully agree on that, uh, Robert. I think uh, NLP is great to processes, huge uh, 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 documents, huge text to find the key elements in it, to see if, if, if that document in itself is relevant for your audit. But also you can use uh, uh, data mining techniques, algorithms to find those uh, um, transactions that really stand out. Uh, once what you, uh, that you probably would not find doing a random uh, a, a sample selection, of, for example. So I, I fully agree. I think there's quite a few techniques that are really useful. Okay, yeah. And I think Kiara, you um, also have some uh, examples within your organization, I think, where you use it. Yeah, um, something something I'm, I might add is that uh, th those techniques are useful not just to execute audits, but also to enhance uh, um, our internal operations, for example, as auditors, we collect tons of data that are collected as uh, in a repository, basically in our audit management systems. Uh, but uh, 
thanks to artificial intelligence technique, we can extract insight from uh, those data, something that uh, a human could not do unless opening everything. But thanks to AI, we could extract import, we could see trends if there are patterns, if there are trending topics uh, within all these data collected in our in our systems. OK, OK, yeah, thank you, Chiara. I think, yeah, we have 10, so we have to write another paper, I think, on this topic. Uh, <laughs> um, when, when looking at it, was uh, the, the second most popular question. What approach should internal audits follow when auditing AI, uh, when providing assurance actually on AI? That's something you I can, can, I uh, can, I can. I can take this one if you, if you want. Um, well, uh, the IIA says that uh, internal audit uh, should approach uh, AI as it approaches everything. Uh, so not in a very different way with, uh, let's say, systematic and disciplined methods uh, to evaluate and improve the effectiveness of the internal control systems related to, uh, to AI. So the approach is not really different from the one that would be applied in any other area. What changes are the uh, competencies uh, required to make this approach uh, systematic and disciplined? First of all, internal audit should uh, recognize uh, that uh, new skill sets are required. Uh, internal audit must have uh, collectively a sufficient understanding of artificial intelligence and of how the organization is using it and of the risk that AI represents uh, for the organization. In alternative organization, internal audit might also uh, bring in from the external those, uh, those expertise uh, required when performing an audit on, uh, on AI. And also uh, recognize that auditing AI does not only require knowledge and expertise about technical aspects of AI, but also um, knowledge uh, regarding data governance, data quality, ethics, uh, all this is, uh, is equally important uh, and internal audit should, should consider all this. Yeah, yeah. And, and as you mentioned before, the, the real business knowledge, yeah? what is it really, how is it really impacting business and, and for example, customer interfacing and really the business understanding. I think we're already uh, a little bit running out of time, uh, uh, Pascal, so I would like to finalize uh, this webinar with, uh, with, with our, let's say, concluding remarks or takeaways. Uh, uh, maybe, Frank, you can start. What is your key takeaway from, uh, from this webinar, but also working on, uh, on the paper together? Yeah, I think that, that, that the, my key takeaway is to um, really see uh, uh, um, um, AI assurance as a integrated part of everything else that is already there. Uh, it's not assurance on AI in itself, but elements like model management, like uh, software development, like uh, uh, data pr uh, data governance, all those aspects, uh, most of the uh, Quite a lot of those aspects are already in place at the organization. I think it's really good uh, if companies to uh, seem to uh, uh, try to seek uh, um, um, uh, for really integration in everything that is already there in place. I think that that will be my uh, uh, key takeaway. Okay, and Kira, Kira, what's your key takeaway? Um, even if I'm going to, to repeat myself, uh, what we saw is that uh, organizations are still relatively immature in respect of auditing digital technologies, but also in the case of uh, more mature organizations, uh, uh, sometimes the opportunity raised by the implementations of uh, AI models are not always accompanied by an appropriate management of the related risks. In, in particular, there is uh, still a lot to do uh, in building a strong governance and a robust structure framework uh, governing uh, these uh, this challenging opportunities. I'm talking, referring to policies, guidelines, all, all what is needed uh, to have an appropriate uh, uh, discipline of this, um, of this new technology. 
Yes, thank you. Yeah, it's very clear. Uh, uh, and Robert, what is when you look back a little bit, what is a key takeaway nobody should forget? Yeah, it was interesting when we developed the paper, um, a lot of changes were only coming, I said at the beginning, with, with the large language models this year. And there's still, there's no consensus in, in the society um, how to deal with all these developments. Um, but what is sure is AI will stay, it will not go away, and it will be used wherever it can be used to generate value. And that's really the important thing. Um, AI is not something good or something bad. It's really how it's applied and how, how it's um, used for, for a better good. And I think internal audit can really play a role here that it is used for a better good and not for something which can harm society or um, individuals. So that, 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 with that, I would really conclude uh, our yeah. learning. That, yeah, yeah I, I agree. And maybe that's, that's my key takeaway that, that uh, things are developing fast. And as you say, especially over the last couple of months, the, months, the large language models, but it's really impacting more and more uh, uh, the business and our environment and we as internal auditors can provide a very important role in, in, in providing insights and advice but also assurance because it is very important to have uh, trustworthy AI as, uh, as we always call it so that would be uh, my concluding remark. Uh, uh, so Pascal I don't know whether you want to uh, uh, wrap up uh, the, the meeting uh, yourself but uh, I would like to thank uh, everybody who's attending this webinar and of course uh, thank my colleagues uh, Frank, Robert and Chiara. Uh, it was wonderful to, uh, uh, to, co to uh, cooperate on, on, on this paper and uh, I hope everybody will, uh, will read the paper uh, which, which lots, of, uh, mm -hmm. lots of interest and will uh, and, and of course we expect it will be very helpful to uh, uh, to make a next step in, in auditing uh, artificial intelligence and, uh, and add value to your company.